Hi everybody, it's Alex Fournier for alexfournierart.com and Artistic Purposes. Today we're going to be dealing with shiny, reflective, wrinkly leather, and in this case, we're going to draw some leather skirts. Let's get going. Today's episode is sponsored by Still Breathing. Travel to Uganda with Lizzie, a 69-year-old widow, and experience the adventure of a lifetime in this powerful novel of second chances. Still Breathing is award-winning fiction set in a third world country with characters who will break your heart. It's available in digital, softcover, or hardback formats from a wide variety of fine retailers. Check for the link in the description, or you can go to bookstoread.com slash Fournier. Let's get started. All right, let's start with this reference. Okay, you definitely have to think about the anatomy that's under it, okay? All right, so we're building some of the anatomy here real quick. We're thinking about things ahead of time, how shadows are gonna play, contours are going different directions, right? So I'm gonna kind of build that in at the front end, okay? We also wanna think about kind of how this connects in terms of a cylinder, how is it wrapping around the form above, okay? All right, so I'm just kind of popping in the waistband here. I don't think I'm going to deal with the hand on this example. Okay, you see that I'm kind of moving vertically with the corner of the charcoal to make these small lines. And then when I need to make a broader line, I'll drag it. Okay, so we've got some wrinkles here. A little seam there. Okay, so the important thing is as you do these wrinkles, you're trying to leave room for highlights Trying to use the edge of the charcoal to, to build these up. And it's important to know which side should be a hard edge and which should be a soft edge. Okay, so you can get these reflections. Okay, we have a pocket here. Okay, it's important to Make sure to get a hard edge on the inside of the pocket. So it looks like it goes in. Like I said, we're going to skip the hand on this reference. Okay, I think I need a little more hip here. Okay. Which is fine. This could this mistake could double as a as a seam, but got a little more hip there, and okay. You see how I'm following? There's there's a highlight, kind of a reflection that I'm following here, but at the same time, I don't want to take away the highlights that are coming across on the wrinkles. So I'm trying to kind of leave those there so that I can 
kind of follow through with those wrinkles on the other side. Okay. All right, and so see me do a little curve in here for the shadow. Okay, that's going to help show that this is connecting on here, and yet there's a shadow coming across here. So maybe a little too dark. Okay, and on the other side, same thing. Okay. There's an important trick. You could actually do what's called the turning edge or dealing with the turning edge right here, uh, leaving that as a highlight even as you throw in the shadow. So I'll leave it in ahead of time so I don't have to erase it back out afterwards. All right, we, let's get our button in here. important to know which side of the thing the shadow which side of the button the shadows on and so even as you put it in the first time you're basically already implying the shadow and leaving it kind of as is okay all right there's a little wrinkle here on the fly Okay, some kind of a couple wrinkles there. All right, so now let's deal with, um, let's see, should I make this hand? Let's just try this hand here. Let's hope I don't get the scale all wrong. And we'll keep it, we'll keep it simple here. Okay, we got to take into account the angle of the cylinder here for the arm. Okay, just implying some hair. Okay, so even though our hand is a little bit big, looks like, um, should be able to just make the fingers shorter. Okay, so let's correct this hand a little longer wrist. Okay, so we've got the hand here, and the reason I want to draw that is because there's actually a shadow from the hand that's seen in here, okay? So we can add the shadow here, so we go hard edge and drag this direction because this form is on top of this form, okay? And then we'll do kind of like the turning edge, but it's what we're doing is implying that this is the shadow of the arm is kind of what we're implying here, okay? And there's a lot of reflective stuff here as well. All right, so let's do a little turning edge. So what I'm what I mean by that is on this edge around this contour on the other side is the part you can't see. And one of the tricks, it's called the turning edge as it like disappears around the other side. One of the tricks for improving the three-dimensionality of of drawing, especially with figure drawing is that by implying this highlight kind of there's light on the other side of this, right? Which makes this look more three-dimensional, okay? Okay, and the other thing is continuing these curves even, even as the drawing disappears, continuing that curve to show it's a cylinder will improve the kind of the understanding of it as a three-dimensional object, okay? Is doing the turning edge on this side. OK, 
Okay. And let's let's just kind of add, you know, a little bit of hint of whatever fabric this is, and we're we're kind of embellishing at this point, right? Okay. We could do turning edge kind of along this side. On here, we could even imply that this is some sort of a you know sweater okay okay so we can kind of imply that you know uh, it's just sometimes fun just to get those different textures in there okay all right so let's make sure we have as much kind of shine as we want on here Okay, I'm trying to imply that there's a seam at the bottom. Okay, and this looks a little weird because I just need to bring that up a little higher. Okay. All right, so we got some shininess here. Um, we could have maybe one or two of these wrinkles get a little further just for good measure right okay That crease to have a little more play, but that's a little too much. All right, so there's our first leather skirt. Let's take a look and see what else we can get. All right, so this one should be pretty fun, I think. Let's try to, we'll probably have to make it a little smaller. And we're gonna start by Kind of figuring out the anatomy. Actually, I'll do this higher since we can't see the top of the page anyway. Okay, so we've got the beginnings of it here. We've got to think just a little bit about the anatomy and making sure that we're leaving enough room for what's under here. Okay, and Okay, working on the calf down here. Okay, and 
see if we can. Ooh, we've even got some leather boots. Maybe we can do those as well. Okay, so let's leave that boot like that for now. Okay, so what we've got, try to figure out, I might have to move this up a little. Okay. All right, so we've got some real basic anatomy here. And what I'm going to need to do is I need try to figure out to make sure that the contours of the legs actually do look like they continue. Okay. And at the same time that we were able to make it look like the material that it is. Okay. And what we're going to do Okay, so we're going to kind of build up some contours here. Okay, and some of these are going to be wrinkles, but some we're going to build up some shapes. Okay, like right here, we can just build up this little rectangle shape. Soften that up a little. Okay, so we've got right here, if you think of a ball, the exercise, the shadow, cast shadow here, core shadow. Okay, so if you think of that, that's what I'm seeing right here. Okay, with the backside here, this is like a core shadow that's going to help us define kind of the circle coming out okay and then it actually kind of makes a shape here okay so it really kind of comes out just like that circle okay and there's also kind of a shape going this way okay and that's going to show that it's coming back out okay it's kind of a little triangle Okay, and we have a kind of a wrinkle okay and then over here we've got another wrinkle and so with leather these are like it's very reflective and it's you really want to build up kind of the shapes of reflection that you see they're all kind of different tones. They're, they're, there's like different planes almost. Okay. And let's try to erase out some of the shape here. Okay. So we've got some shininess going on. Okay. Then under this arm, you can see that it's also some shapes, but it's a nice solid shadow. But some of this darkness kind of leads into these shapes of shapes of highlights here, showing that it's wrinkly, but it's shiny, right? And I think that's one of the reasons things like leather or like a heavy material, why they're so fun to to draw, is because they do they do break down into the shapes of things and reflections and not, you know, there's solid edges uh, and different tones. They're not all, it's not as subtle. It's really fun to kind of build up the shapes. Okay. Okay, you see how this is coming to life right there? Okay, and we have, in this case, a 
kind of an extra tone that's right here that kind of leads to that highlight there. And it's kind of fun. So we have a, a zipper, I guess, is what that is. And we'll see if we can accomplish this. I don't know. Okay. And what we're going to need to do, we're going to need to try to, so I'll use this kind of eraser. We're going to need to try to show the highlight there. All right, so let's try to let's try to define kind of how this intersects. <clears throat> All right, so this should be a fun part. We're doing the shadow underneath the skirt connecting to the legs. And so we're going to want to think about bounce light we don't want to just make everything dark so we want to we want to think about the shapes that are actually under here there's bounce light there's turning edge right we want to be able to we want to be able to have kind of some complexity here okay because we're really trying to show the roundness of the leg the flatness of the back of the skirt but then also there's some really good kind of reflections kind of shininess happening so we we don't want to we have a lot of fun stuff to work on and we don't want to kind of give it up too easily here okay all right so we got these reflections underneath we do have a muscle because this is um flexing right here okay that's kind of fun we get to do the actual little muscle there okay okay so then I'm gonna just do some turning edge right we're just we're going with the contour of the leg but leaving room for this edge light on the side okay okay we'll deal with that in a minute all right Pretty cool. Okay, so let's do just a little turning edge on this one just to get some three dimensionality. Okay, so then this other leg, we gotta, we definitely wanna leave some of the highlight there. Okay, you'll notice something here. We wanna kinda curve in here because this other leg is close to it, and so there's kind of like a bounce and a shadow happening there just just from how close it is so that's what i'm trying to do there okay and then this is going to be the turning edge kind of leading to that shadow now what's fun about this one is there's if we can do it there's kind of almost like this reflection or a highlight we'll see if we can accomplish this Okay. Okay, you see how there's this this highlight right here. Now, don't know for sure whether it's going to work as cool as I want it to. We'll find out. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay. And then I'm going to add one more tone here right there. Okay, and this is kind of fun. So we're going to do the we've got turning edge here, but we also have this rounded shadow as it goes to here. Okay, and so all right. So so now we've got the shadow underneath here. Do wanna. Get a little turning edge here. Okay, and then we've got our, let's get a little, a little shinier 
leading to here. Okay, once again, we're building these as shapes. It's not, you don't just go wild on it. You gotta, you gotta build them up, okay? And I'm just doing some wrinkles there. Okay, I'm just going to imply this this hand and just have it kind of disappear yeah, on the other side. Okay, you see how this can come to life as you build these these wrinkles and tones and and highlights. Okay, then over here is kind of fun. So it's darker because this is like the shadow of the hand. But then there's a highlight on the other side, right? So we've got the this highlight. Get a few kind of tones in here. Okay, nice and nice and shiny. Let's make this connection just a little darker. Oh, and actually, okay, so we've actually got the front of the skirt here, so let's go ahead and try to get that in there. Okay, and what do we got going over here? Okay. Okay, I'm just trying to build up the the one little step of darker tones here. Okay, pretty nice. Okay, let's get this turning edge under this part of the leg. And we might as well, it's also made of leather, we might as well have a quick bit of fun with the leather shoes. Okay, and you notice on leather, um, there's these kind of sharp little geometric shapes that you can build that really start feeling like re like it's reflective, right? Okay, let's have some fun with applying these little these deals here. All right, those are kind of fun. And it doesn't have to be some perfect thing. It's a little stylized, but kind of like it. Okay, you notice I just added a little bit of a core shadow that leads to this next part. And so it looks potentially like the kind of the curve of the 
sole of the shoe as it leads to the kind of the rubber bottom that there's a little bit of a highlight here popping that out um, the reference I don't quite know how the bottom of the shoe looks and then maybe just leave a little to the imagination since I don't quite don't quite have the uh, I say that as I take it randomly All right. Okay, so nice and reflective there. You can add a few highlights here. Okay, the other fun thing about leather is I could build these even even a, an additional tone because of the shininess of it, right? You see how I can add one more tone of kind of shininess to it? And it almost starts to feel like uh, maybe a little bit of a watercolor wash there for a minute as you as you build up this kind of a silver tone in there. Okay, not going to go overboard because I don't want to completely ruin it, but you can see how you could really shine something up uh, pretty well by way, by just adding this with a finger. The other tool you could use to do this kind of smearing is a industrial paper towel. It's like a heavy duty paper towel that mechanics would use. And I'm not going to do it on this one, but you could smear out the little patterns that you have and really really kind of uh kind of build up build up your shininess there. Okay, so what I want to do can I can I I'm trying to get one more little thing of kind of realism here and I'm trying to get like the, there we go I'm trying to get this little highlight of a wrinkle to be a little more obvious that that's what it is so maybe I will bring this paper towel into into service here okay because what I need to be able to do is have this part there we go I want to have this part be a little more what the reference looks like where we have a more of a highlight right there okay and might as well just bring this a little bit further up since since we have so one of the issues is once you introduce any amount of smearing into your piece it does change kind of the the tonal structure of it and so you kind of have to decide whether you really want to go that next that next route and I've had drawings where I'm happy that I went that extra route and drawings where I thought oh I shouldn't have done that and so you kind of have to you kind of have to decide little by little which which drawings, especially if they're practice, which ones you want to take into that blended mode and which ones you want to leave. And I think because this one actually is working pretty well, I think I will kind of add this extra mode just to show you what it looks like. Okay, and so you really, you do get some more realism, but you do also take away any subtlety sometimes of the of the strokes that you had and so you kind of have to you just have to be smart about it okay and what else can we do can we all right it's looking pretty good okay Let's let's soften up her part of her shirt over here just to match the style. I don't want to smear it too much though because it takes away the kind of the um, the dark the darkest tones disappear. Okay. Okay, 
and looks like we're missing this one other part of this shadow. So I gotta kind of build this up. So in this case, got a shadow starts hard right here and it kind of disappears. And for good reason, because it's going away, you know, it's going away from the hardest part of the shadow, okay? Okay. All right, can we do this one little seam at the bottom? Okay, and we have a few, few little pleats around here. All right, pretty happy with that. Nice and shiny. Okay, this one a little lesser on the level of detail. We could have taken this the same way. This is a little easier because it had more pronounced shadows and, and reflection. Um, and also we have a little more to work with with the legs. All right, let's move on. All right, let's try a small one over on the left side of the page. See if we can squeeze in one more drawing, save the paper. All right, here we go. Okay, so a lot of times you try to think of the anatomy that's under here, okay? And that way, it's much easier. All right, so we've got some basic anatomy here, and now we're gonna want to kind of build in, build in the dress around it. So, got, we know that the, the shadows under always have to have this kind of rounded shape to it, right? So you can always almost like build it up automatically when you look at it, okay? If you end up making just a flat shadow, it's not going to look like a cylinder, right? It's just going to look like, it's just going to look like some lines. All right, and so up here, you can see there's... There's a dark part, a highlight, a highlight. And so let's take out the highlight here. Okay, and you can see I almost could do this ahead of time. There's some spots on here that are 
dark in some spots that are light, okay? And basically, they're basically based on where the where the pleats in the dress are are going, okay? But we could actually build those up without having to draw every pleat, right? So we could imply, okay, which, which angle the pleats are going right there. Leave a highlight, okay, over here. These are a little darker. Kind of rejoin where these are a little bit, okay. The other thing is to look at which direction the pleats are and kind of where the where the open part of it is just to try to figure out you know if you're properly making it look three-dimensional here okay and we could there's like one sticking out right here there's a few of these are in a highlight okay and same with like right here okay and so we could basically build these back in and just add some kind of some tones where we need to. We do want to leave like a turning edge and I'll, I'll add this arm like a little bit further over. Okay. I always kind of leave this, leave room for the turning edge, even when I'm building the shadow in there. I just, I just like leave it, kind of place it ahead of time. Um, and you can always take it back out by filling it in, but it's very hard to get it to, removed if you, if you fill it in with, uh, you know, dark charcoal. It's very unlikely to get it back erased without seeing where it was. Okay, let's do some turning edge on the leg. Okay, might as well apply the muscles coming to the knee. Okay, we're kind of running out of room to be accurate over here. But it's more like that. All right, so, got turning edge on the arm. Okay, notice this other technique about how to how to show something is tucked in is you draw the the core shadow kind of edge but leave a bounce leave leave a little room before it goes into the next part and that that's going to help it look like it comes out okay can we add a highlight there Okay, let's fix the hand. All right, so let's get these a little bit more three-dimensional. And the other way is to try to imply a little bit of unevenness on this bottom, these bottom ones, okay? It doesn't require them all to be perfect. You just have to imply it. All right, that does it for part one of Leather and Leather Skirts. Be sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, all that good stuff. Check out my website, alexforniarart.com. Be sure to check out my other videos on jeans, jean shorts, leather boots, all kinds of crazy material and things like that. Be sure to drop me a line if you've got questions you want me to cover in a future video, any ideas for uh, future topics that you'd like me to tackle. All right, have a great day.